Very good morning. You're watching the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television this Tuesday morning. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor, and these are the headlines. Jitendra Singh, Sadanand Gora, H D Deve Gora, and Kani Mori among candidates in the second phase, nominations for which end today. Polling took over 97 seats in 13 states. In Odisha, second phase nominations to end for 35 assembly seats. Amit Shah to address the Vijay Sankalp rally in Moradabad. Rahul Gandhi to address rallies in Rajasthan's Suratgarh and Bundi. Campaigning also gains momentum for Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, Arunachal Pradesh, and Sikkim state elections. Arun Jaitley calls Rahul Gandhi's minimum income guarantee a bluff. Congress president had promised 72,000 rupees annual income to 20% of the poorest families. President Ramnath Kovind arrives in Croatia for bilateral talks on first leg of his three-nation visit. President Kovind is the first head of state from India to visit the country. And India faces a host Malaysia in third league match for Aslan Shah Cup today. India plays third in team positions. Malaysia leads the chart. First of all, the news related to the upcoming Assembly and Lok Sabha elections. Today is the last date for filing of nominations for the second phase of Lok Sabha elections. 97 constituencies spread over 13 states and union territories will go to polls in this phase on the 18th of April. The scrutiny will take place on Wednesday, while 29th of March is the last date for the withdrawal of candidature. All 39 parliamentary constituencies of Tamil Nadu will go to polls in this phase. Voting will take place also for 14 seats in Karnataka, 10 in Maharashtra, 8 in Uttar Pradesh, 5 seats each in Assam, Bihar, and Odisha, 3 each in Chhattisgarh and West Bengal, 2 in Jammu and Kashmir, and 1 seat each in Manipur, Tripura, and Puducherry. The Lok Sabha elections will start on 11th of April and continue till 19th of May in seven phases, and the counting will be held on 23rd of May. Meanwhile, nomination process will also end for the second phase polling on 35 assembly seats in Odisha. And uh, the filing of nominations for the first phase of Lok Sabha elections came to an end on Monday evening. The last day saw several big wigs of different political parties filing their nomination papers for the upcoming polls. Union Minister Nitin Gadkari filed his nomination for the Nagpur Lok Sabha seat, where polls will be held on 11th of April. Also, BJP leader and Union Minister General retired V K Singh also filed his nomination papers. For the Ghaziabad parliamentary seat, while BJP candidate from Mathura Hema Malini also filed her nomination papers. National Conference President Farooq Abdullah filed his nomination papers uh, from the prestigious uh, Srinagar Lok Sabha seat, which is going to polls in the second phase of the general election on 18th of April. And in Karnataka, JDS uh, patriarch and former Prime Minister H D Devgowda filed his nomination from Tumkur as the ruling alliance candidate. Also, DMK leader Kani Mori, BJP Tamil Nadu unit chief uh, Tamil Sai Sundarajan, Congress's uh, Karthi Chidambaram were among the prominent personalities who filed their papers on Monday for the 18th of April Lok Sabha elections. The scrutiny of nomination papers uh, filed for the first phase of Lok Sabha polls uh, will be carried out today, and uh, the last date uh, for the withdrawal of nomination papers is uh, 28th of March. And intensifying the election campaign for the Lok Sabha polls, the BJP leaders, including Amit Shah, Rajnath Singh, and Sushma Swaraj, will address Vijay Sankalp Sabhas across the country today. BJP President Amit Shah will address a rally in Moradabad, 
Home Minister Rajnath Singh will address a rally in Delhi's Northeast Parliamentary constituency, Gokulpuri. Similarly, Sushma Swaraj will also address a rally in Ghaziabad. Other prominent leaders to address the Vijay Sankalp Sabha includes Ravi Shankar Prasad in West Bengal, Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi in Amroha, J.P. Nadda in Shah Jahanpur, Piyush Goel in Tamil Nadu and UP Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath in Varanasi and in Gorakhpur. BJP President Amit Shah launched the party's poll campaign after the Lok Sabha election schedule was announced with a rally in Agra in Uttar Pradesh on Sunday. And Congress President Rahul Gandhi will be on a day's visit to Rajasthan and he will be addressing two poll campaign rallies today. Congress Chief Rahul Gandhi would be addressing rallies in Sri Ganganagar districts, uh, Suratgarh and in Bundi. Later, he will meet his party's workers at the Ramlila Maidan in Jaipur. Now, this is Rahul Gandhi's uh, first visit to the state uh, for poll campaigning in the run up to the Lok Sabha elections. Rajasthan, which has 25 Lok Sabha seats, will go to polls in two phases. Elections on 13 seats will be held on 29th of April and on the remaining 12 seats on 6th of May. And the BJP has released another list of four candidates for Lok Sabha elections. Two Lok Sabha poll candidates are for Karnataka and one each for Assam and Uttar Pradesh. The party has uh, fielded Ashwat Narayan from Bangalore Rural and Tejasvi Surya from Bangalore South Parliamentary constituencies of Karnataka. Rajveer Singhal Balmiki will be the party's candidate from Hathras Lok Sabha seat in Uttar Pradesh. The party also announced the name of uh, Sanat Gatya as its candidate uh, for the Bejapur Assembly seat in Odisha. Now, Gatya will contest against Chief Minister and BJD Chief Naveen Patnaik in Bijapur in Odisha polls, which will be held simultaneously in the state with the parliamentary elections. And with this list, the party has announced the names of, in total, 310 candidates for the Lok Sabha elections. News from the Congress's camp uh, where the party on Monday fielded Sanjay Nirupam from Northwest Mumbai as it released the names of 32 more candidates for Lok Sabha elections. The announcement of uh, Nirupam's candidature came on a day where he was uh, removed from the post of Mumbai Regional Congress Committee Chief. He has been replaced by former Union Minister Milindiora. Congress released uh, names of uh, 26 candidates out of which 25 were for West Bengal. The party also released another second list naming five candidates, two from Chhattisgarh, two for Goa and one for the Union Territory of Daman and Diu. And later in the night, Congress also announced that its candidate for the Bangalore North constituency will be Krishna Vaigora, a minister in the Karnataka government. And with this, the party has announced a total of 259 candidates so far. The Congress on Monday also named four candidates for assembly polls in Odisha. And in a big poll promise, Congress President Rahul Gandhi on Monday announced that 20% of families in the poorest of the poor category will be given 72,000 rupees each annually as a minimum basic income. He said that 5 crore families and 25 crore people will directly benefit from the scheme terming it uh, as a final assault to eradic eradicate poverty in the country. If your income is less than 12,000 rupees, then we will reach your income to 12,000. No one will do any work. When that person comfortably out of 12,000, then the scheme will pass. So it will, it will stop on its own. But हमारी हमारी philosophy है कि अगर आप हिंदुस्तान में आज एक minimum income से कम आपकी आमदनी है, तो फिर आप गरीबी से निकल ही नहीं सकते हो। तो हम identify करना चाहते हैं इस देश में सबसे गरीब लोग कौन हैं, और एक बार हम उनको गरीबी से निकालना चाहते हैं, खत्म करना चाहते हैं। तो ये ये एक प्रकार से मनरेगा first phase था operation का मनरेगा में 14 करोड़ लोगों को हमने गरीबी से निकाला 
Rahul Gandhi announced the minimum income guarantee scheme after a meeting of the Congress Working Committee. The CWC had met at the party headquarters to give a final shape to the manifesto. Chaired by Congress President Rahul Gandhi, the meeting was also attended by former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, senior leaders of the party like Priyanka Gandhi, Ahmed Patel, Ghulam Nabi Azad, Malik Arjun Kharge and A.K. Antony. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley termed Rahul Gandhi's minimum income guarantee scheme a bluff announcement. Arun Jaitley said that the grand old Congress party has a history of making false assurances, adding that they wake up to the plight of the poor just before the elections. Unka itihas garibi ko hatane ka nahi raha. Garibi ko hatane ke liye koi sadhan diye jaye, wo bhi unka itihas nahi raha. योजनाओं के नाम पर छल कपट रहा है तो 10 वर्ष के यूपीए के कार्यकाल में भी किस प्रकार से एक प्रकार से छल कपट धोखा ब्लफ होता था लोन वेवर जीवन में एक बार सत्तर हजार करोड़ का हम तो पीएम किसान में पिचहत्तर हजार करोड़ प्रति वर्ष देंगे हम तो मनरेगा में 60,000 करोड़ प्रति वर्ष दे रहे हैं। Putting up his account in a blog, Arun Jaitley added up the expenditure incurred by the government on the ongoing welfare schemes to argue that the Narendra Modi government's welfare benefits to people averaged 1 lakh 6,800 rupees annually, as against the 72,000 rupees that the Congress seeks to promise. तो अगर हम ये सारा का सारा इसमें से काफी कुछ लगभग 60-70 फीसदी हम डीबीटी से दे रहे हैं बाकी भी डीबीटी से शुरू कर दे जो होना चाहिए मैं मानता हूं तो इन गरीब परिवारों को जो नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने दिया है वो आज की तारीख में है 5.34 लाख करोड़ जो आज दिया जा रहा है तो ये कौन सा 3.6 लाख करोड़ डीबीटी के माध्यम से देकर आप गरीब पे एहसान कर रहे हो न्यूज फ्रॉम ओडिशा द बीजेपी अनाउंस द नेम्स ऑफ कैंडिडेट्स फॉर टू लोकसभा सीट्स एंड 19 असेंबली कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसीज इन ओडिशा ओडिशा इज ऑल सेट टू गो टू पोल्स सिमिलटेनियसली इन फोर फेजेस बिटवीन अप्रैल 11 एंड अप्रैल 29 Former Odisha DGP Prakash Mishra, who joined the BJP on Sunday, has been uh, fielded from Katak Lok Sabha seat. Ex-MP Karavel Swain, who was inducted into the party on Monday morning, has been given a ticket from Kandamal uh, Parliamentary Constituency in the Maoist Belt. And with Monday's announcement, the BJP has named uh, candidates for 17 out of 21 Lok Sabha seats and for 130 out of 147 assembly constituencies in the state. Paralympic Games winner Deepa Malik joined the BJP on Monday. She joined the BJP in the presence of her party's uh, Haryana unit chief Subhash Barala and the general secretary Anil Jain, who is in charge of its affairs in the state. She is the first Indian woman to win a medal in Paralympic Games. INLD MLA from Khatin Kehar Singh also has joined the BJP. I am saying that the vision that I have seen in Modi government, which has worked in the Pradhan Mantri Ji in the Mahila Sashakti Karan, the vision that the vision of Mahila is showing the vision of the Mahila. The main portfolios you are seeing, our Defence Minister, Foreign Minister, Smriti Rani Ji, Minka Ji, they have kept the leading position in the Mahila. They have worked for the Divyangu, they have worked in the Sugam, and in the Khelu Ki Nitiyo, we have so much जोर शोर से योगदान दिया है शायद नीतियां इतनी खूबसूरत बनी हैं तो मुझे लग रहा है कहीं ये सही विचारधारा है हमारे देश के नेतृत्व के लिए and the Nationalist Congress Party of the NCP released its manifesto for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections on Monday. 
In the manifesto, the NCP has promised complete loan waiver for small and middle income farmers. The party also said that resumption of talks with Pakistan, especially on terrorism, was essential for the betterment of ties between the two countries. The manifesto also promised a structural reforms to drive sustainable agriculture growth, 33% reservation for women in parliament, and also the scrapping of a triple talaq bill in the present form. The NCP has also assured equal work, equal pay to all employees. Our party's main message in this government is to save the सबसे गहरा हमला पांच वर्षों में संविधान और उसके द्वारा बनाई गई तमाम संस्थाओं पर है न्यायपालिका हो कार्यपालिका हो विधायिका हो सभी पर एक तरह का हमला ये सरकार कर रही है and in more election-related news, the Supreme Court has sought Election Commission's reply on increasing VVPAT sample survey per assembly segment. A two-judge bench directed the poll panel to apprise whether the number of a voter verifiable paper audit trail or VVPAT samples can be increased from one in each assembly segment for the satisfaction of the electorate. The court was hearing a plea which has been filed by 21 opposition leaders led by Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister N. Chandrababu Naidu seeking that VVPAT slips of at least 50% of voting machines in each assembly seat be checked randomly in the Lok Sabha elections. The parties include the Congress, Nationalist Congress Party, Aam Admi Party, the left, Trinamul Congress, Samajwadi Party, Bahujan Samaj Party, Rashtriya Lok Dal, Lok Tantrik Janta Dal and the DMK. The matter will now be heard on 1st of April. Those are all the news related to the upcoming uh, Assembly and Lok Sabha elections and we'll take a very short break here. News and updates continue on the other side. Rabindranath Tagore was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1913 for his book Gitanjali. In 1950, he composed the music and lyrics for India's national anthem, Jana Gana Mana. And when Bangladesh became independent in 1971, they chose Tagore's song, Amar Shonar Bangla, as its national anthem. Tagore's life and works have made him a cultural icon, studied the world over, even into the 21st century. Jet Airways founders Naresh Goel and his wife Anita Goel stepped down from the board of the cash-strapped airline on Monday. Goel also resigned as the chairman of India's oldest private sector airline. Apart from Goel's, one nominee of Etihad Airways, which holds a 24% stake in the jet, has also stepped down from the board. According to a regulatory Filing, the JET will receive an immediate funding of 1,500 crore rupees under a resolution plan pledged by its lenders. An interim management committee will be constituted to manage and monitor the daily operations as well as the cash flow of the company. With a debt burden of more than 8,000 crore rupees, JET is facing the worst financial crisis of its 25 years old existence. The development comes after weeks of speculations and uncertainties over the future course of the airlines, which has grounded over 80 planes due to financial woes and has also defaulted on loan payments, payments to its vendors and delayed salaries to its employees. President Ramnath Kovind reached the Croatian capital on the first leg of his three-nation tour to Croatia, Bolivia and Chile. He has been accorded a Rousing welcome by the Croatian dignitaries and the officials of the Indian Embassy. 
President Ramnath Kovind is the first ever Indian head of state to visit the country. In Croatia, President Kovind will meet his Croatian counterpart as well as the Croatian Prime Minister. Both nations hope to focus on strengthening trade and investment linkages. The top international focus, U.S. President Donald Trump on Monday recognized Israel's 1981 annexation of the Golan Heights. With Netanyahu looking over his shoulder at the White House, Donald Trump signed a proclamation officially granting U.S. recognition of Golan Heights as an Israeli territory, a dramatic shift for, from decades of U.S. policy. Now, the move, which Donald Trump announced in a tweet last Thursday, appeared to be the most uh, overt gesture by the Republican president to help uh, Netanyahu, who has been pressing Donald Trump for the move since February 2017. However, the foreign minister of Syria said that the U.S.'s recognition of Israeli sovereignty over Golan Heights will lead to U.S.'s isolation. Israel had captured the Golan Heights in 1967 Middle East War and had annexed it in 1981 in a move not recognized internationally. Israel's Prime Minister arrived in Washington on Sunday or for a four-day trip. It was uh, a great honor to be on Israeli soil uh, and to celebrate with Prime Minister Netanyahu at the very moment President Trump boldly recognized the Golan Heights for what it is, a part of Israel. <laughs> President Trump, alongside Prime Minister Netanyahu, signed a decree a decree affirming Israel's sovereignty over the Golan. <clears throat> and in a big setback uh, to Prime Minister Theresa May, Britain's parliament has grabbed control of the government's efforts to leave the European Union. On Monday, British parliament passed an amendment giving itself the power to vote on alternatives to the government's Brexit plan. British MPs voted to take control of the House of Commons business to try to find a majority for any Brexit option. The government was defeated by 329 votes to 302 on the cross-party amendment, a majority of just 27. Now, by trying to find a Brexit path, lawmakers could create a constitutional showdown in Britain, where the government normally controls the agenda in Parliament, especially on its most pressing issues. British Parliament's attempt to take control of the process came as the Theresa May prepared for a last-ditch effort to persuade lawmakers to support her withdrawal plan, which has already been rejected twice by huge margins. Now, with the amendment now cleared, means that MPs will now get a series of votes on Wednesday to find out what kind of Brexit they will support. May, however, said that... Uh, there is no guarantee that she will now abide by their decision. And in more international news, uh, France signed 15 business contracts with China worth billions of euros on Monday. This after Chinese President Xi Jinping arrived at the LEC Palace, Palace in Paris on Monday for a roundtable meeting with French President Emmanuel Macron. The deals signed includes a multi-plane order with Airbus. After their meeting, Chinese President Xi Jinping and his French counterpart Emmanuel Macron called for increased cooperation between the European Union and China at a time of growing nervousness over Beijing's massive investments on the continent. And President Xi, for his part, stressed that a united and prosperous Europe fits in with our vision of a multipolar world. Earlier on his uh, trip, she had visited Italy, which became the first G7 state to sign up for uh, the China's vast new Silk Road infrastructure project that has sparked unease in the U.S. and the European Union. And today, that is on Tuesday, she will meet with German Chancellor Angela Merkel as well as the European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker. Sports News Now, India will take on host Malaysia in the third league match of the Aslan Shah Cup hockey tournament. And in today's match, Indian team can ill afford to make any mistake, especially against a side like Malaysia, which in the recent past has the time and again exploited grey areas to continue to remain on the top of its game. India is currently placed third in the six-team standings with four points after a win and a draw. 
while host Malaysia is leading the chart with maximum points. South Korea is in the second spot with four points, the same as India. And in other matches, Japan will play Canada, while Poland will be up against South Korea. And that is the wrap on this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead.